Hey everyone, it's Blaze FK7, and today I'll be talking to you guys about the top five first best mods for both your 10th generation Civic, the 11th generation Civic, as well as the Integra models because they share practically the same motor. Um, this is going to be a more comprehensive, detailed guide rather than my YouTube short, that rather than my YouTube short, which like wave off the top five mods really quickly, but. I wanted to talk more in detail here so you guys, for those of you guys who are more curious and wanted to know more information, this could be really helpful. So without further ado, let's get started. So I mentioned that a really good starter mod would be the inexhaust. So what even is an exhaust? So according to Google, an exhaust is the escape of used gas or vapor from an engine. So basically it's like the part underneath the car where all the gas um, goes out and then um, usually, usually it's like the, the dual tips or like the, you know, single hole that you see out the back of your car. And from factory, these exhaust systems are usually supposed to be really quiet because they're supposed to meet, um, you know, emissions regulations and whatever. But for a lot of car enthusiasts, they don't like the, the way that their stock sound um, exhaust system sounds because it's too quiet and it's just too restrictive. So upgrading your exhaust to a proper capac system can increase the sound uh, not only make it louder make but make it sound good so um there's multiple ways you can do this so besides getting a capac exhaust which is the best way to do it because um it removes drone but uh, another way you could do it is another process called straight piping which is what i did on my car initially and i'm sure you've heard it all across the internet so what even is a straight pipe? So straight piping is basically you removing your stock resonators, your mufflers from your original exhaust system and replacing it with just a straight pipe. So by removing these mufflers and resonators, um, you're making the car a lot louder, both on the inside and outside. So that outside sound can be really good, but the downside of this is that um, the interior has like, when you start driving, you can hear some like undesired frequencies, it's called drone but you can start hearing this sound when you're driving. So that's why it's not really preferred. Um, but the benefit of this is that it's usually like three times cheaper than get probably getting like a proper catback exhaust. But I highly suggest you guys get a proper catback exhaust if you really want to do it the right way. And moving on to number two, I had a cold air intake. So what even is a intake? So Basically, this intake is usually uh, connected to your turbo um, on the 10th gen Civic. If you guys have the 1.5 liter turbo or uh, the two liter turbo, if you have a Type R or the Accord, I guess. But basically these intake systems take in some air and they make a whoosh sound. So obviously from the factory, they don't do that. Uh, at least not make the whoosh sound, but basically they just take in air and then help cool your engine down just a little bit. But the benefits of a colder intake is that um, they usually get cooler air from your car. They're a little bit bigger. They have a better um, housing. And as for my specific uh, cold air intake on my 10th gen Civic, it kind of um, it's kind of angled to the ground, so it can uh, get better air from like I guess um, lower like underneath the engine. So basically, by getting cooler air, it feeds this to your engine and helps cool it down all while adding this little really nice whoosh sound. So um, I'm, I've already had a, posted a lot of clips on my channel where you can hear the PRL cold air intake. And um, this is probably one of my favorite mods that I've done to my car and some of my other friends' cars is because it makes a really nice sound and it can add up to 15 to 20 wheel horsepower when paired with a tune. Um, what else is it also it's really cost effective unlike the exhaust where it's like a thousand dollars you know it can range you know a lot of prices but colder intakes are usually set at 300 to 400 dollars so notable brands for our cars are prl and 271 as well as inject intake sorry i'm sorry if i butcher that name i think it's called inject in i-n-j-e-q or something like that um, but basically these are really good reputable brands for our cars. They're super easy to install um, And they just make your car sound a lot better Now moving on to number three and four I said it was um, the wheels and tires, so Why should you do wheels and tires? I mean are they just cosmetics or are they just kind of useless, but um, So basically wheels they just kind of increase 
they just kind of make the look of your car more of your own so yeah it's more of like a cosmetic upgrade but there is also a benefit which is um they're usually a couple pounds lighter per wheel than your stock wheels so the stock wheels i mean they're just made to look okay they're not really flush usually with the fenders but aftermarket wheels you can always get more aggressive offsets so they can be more flush I'll post a picture over here, I guess, but they're usually more flush with the fenders, so they look a little bit better, and um, they have a nicer design, and they're usually a couple pounds lighter, so basically, what does that translate to? It means that you can drive the car a little bit harder, you can corner a little bit better, and the car will be a little bit more responsive. And so, as for tires, this is probably the more beneficial mod than wheels so this is something that's actually going to able to feel like immediately indifferent so wheels are nice but tires are the you know the part that connects straight to the the ground the pavement these are the things that let you grip really well so usually the stock tires for our cars are just like the 235 continentals if you have the sport model i forgot what it was if you have the lx or the ex models they're usually a little bit worse but the stock tires are really bad when you're trying to corner hard or drive a little bit faster. So um, I have the stock 235 Continental tires and I'm pretty sure most sport models do for the Civic Hatchback or the Sport Sedan or the 11th generation. They're not very good. Like you can hear your tires screeching a lot if you try doing some hard cornering or you make a tight right turn. They're not very good. They're not very like safe if you want to drive fast. So upgrading these tires, such as Michelin Pilots, um, I have some Yokohamas on mine, which are a little bit overkill, they're really good. But you know, basically having these good reputable tire brands on your car will help you grip a lot better. It allows you to travel um, with a better peace of mind when you're trying to drive a little bit faster. You grip a little bit faster, you're, let's say if you're trying to go on a highway ramp and you're merging, by having better tires, you're able to go a little bit faster on those ramps. and. <laughs> You know your your usual like regular SUV. I don't really condone doing that, but it's really fun to do if you have really nice tires. Anyway, so lastly, I mentioned on the YouTube short number five, it's a tuning tuning device. So, what even is a tuning device? So, there's these two really big ones in our community, which is called K Tuner and Honda. So. What these devices do is basically you plug them into your car, the OBD2 port specifically, and then if you have a new tune on your computer or you bought a new tune or these K-Tuner and Honda ones actually come with base tunes, you can just flash immediately to your car. But basically what you do is you flash a new tune on your car, the car's ECU or like the computer basically kind of reads these and then um, it kind of optimizes your car for power instead of fuel economy which our cars are initially um meant to be you know fuel economic cars by but by rewriting the uh, computer system to be more power efficient you're able to get a lot more horsepower so usually just from a tune itself on 91 octane like a 20 21 psi boost from k tuner um i think you see a 30 wheel horsepower increase and probably like 30 wheel torque which is really nice you're able to tell instantly it's a lot faster. Um, and these devices, alongside just having these um, base tunes, they're also really helpful when you buy custom tunes or you're trying to buy variable, uh, um, variable or two-step performance tunes. Basically, these are the more hardcore tunes that a lot of people in our community use. So after I switched from the K-Tuner base tune, I used the variable 1.5R and keep in mind, whenever you have a, um, whenever you tuning your car, make sure you always have the highest octane available in your area, which is for California residents, it should be 91 octane. For people in the Midwest to the East Coast, it's usually 93 octane. So make sure to put that in so you get the optimal performance. Never put 87 in your car, even in stock, please. It's not recommended by our manufacturers, but. But yeah, by having high level octane fuels and mixing that with um, the tunes, you're able to see a lot of power coming to our car. Just well, like just by itself, even without any mods, you're able to be really surprised. Um, and yeah, so these devices are quite expensive. 
there is a more budget-friendly one from K-Tuner, which is the version 1.2. That one costs $400, I believe. It doesn't have a screen like the K-Tuner uh, version 2, which I have. It's really nice. You can see all the gauges, the ethanol gauges, uh, how fast you're really going, your RPMs. I highly suggest that one because it's $200 more, but I think it's really worth it. And you're able to store up to five tunes. But Hondata is a little bit more expensive. I think it's $100 more than K-Tuner version 2. Now, a lot of the Type R owners usually have the Han Data. I forgot why exactly, but I think it was that um, it's better for the Type R's, I think, or they're just more optimized for Type R's. But for the everyday Civic 1.5 liter turbo driver, like, you know, the hatchback owners, the sedans, getting to K-Tuner is probably the more budget friendly and the better option. Anyways, guys, um, thank you guys for watching. If you guys have any questions or have any more recommendations for better video ideas, let me know. Put that in the comments and I'll try to um, accommodate. Anyways, but thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you next time.